And the one that I'm using now for the Amoeba people, um, I will explain briefly for the mm-hmm. listeners sure. uh, who might not be familiar, but um, Lan Theremin, I think he was a scientist or he was a researcher of some sort, or but he was also a musician. So um, he, uh, he basically developed, I don't remember the reason he developed it, but he developed this box that, um, you know, when you pass within the electromagnetic field of the antenna, um, it, it basically translate it, it translates it to a pitch. Mm-hmm. And so you can change the pitch by moving uh, the placement of your hand or your body. You could use your head, of course, but, um, but uh, most thereminists use their hand. Um, and then on, so that, that's toward the uh, vertical antenna where you create pitch. And then on the um, kind of lateral antenna is your volume antenna where you can control how loud or soft it gets and kind of uh, mess with your dynamics that way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's this very kind of eerie but beautiful um, electronic sound yeah. that became really popular in you know old sci-fi movies. And uh, Oh yeah, yeah, it's, that's, that's the best way to describe it is it's that old sci-fi noise that everyone yeah. is familiar with. Exactly. But it's so cool to see someone play an instrument without touching anything yeah technically and that's, yeah that's what is most it's still a trip to it. me yeah. sometimes you mm-hmm. know and 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 when i use it in fact i was just using it the other day on a um a cartoon we've been collaborating on with an animator and i was using it for an effect like a hover effect mm-hmm. and um uh so you know you could use it for so many different things on with the amoeba people i use a uh, we we did have like kind of an older style one at first but now um i use the thera mini uh, and no, uh, I don't get clever. paid. I don't get paid anything by Moog um, Electronics or Moog keyboards uh, to say that. But um, they make the theremin. Moog does, and uh, and it's great because what they did was they you can play it like a traditional theremin. And they cased it so that it looks like a spaceship, which is awesome. Uh, so it's in this <laughs> cool white casing, like looks like no other theremin. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then what they did was they built um, a synthesizer into it, so you can hit different settings. Um, so instead of just the one theremin sound, they've programmed in thirty some different types of sounds. Oh my god! Yeah, and then you're, I mean you're you're, you're not going to wait to buy that uh, theremin after you hear all this because um, it's it's that incredible. You're going to want to run out this what's afternoon. What's this one cost? Um, I think it's about like three hundred to three hundred fifty bucks. Whereas yeah. you know a lot of theremins are more in the thousand dollar range. Yeah. So and and what happens is you can actually I will admit I I use this uh, effect. Um, you can pitch it so that y- usually theremin just kind of does a sweep. It's a continuous. Yeah, there's no distinction between right. the notes unless you figure out how to play mm-hmm. those distinct notes. Whereas uh, with this, you can actually um, set it up so that it'll play at a single note at a time, depending on where your hand is. Wow. And you can um, dial in uh, how distinct you want those notes to be. So mm-hmm. there's a dial knob on it that you can kind of tweak back and so forth. So it's like pitch corrected theremin. Yes, yeah. which of course, if you've ever played one, you know, and, and you're not a thereminist, you kind of need pitch correction. Right. And so, um, so on our song Volcano, which is on the new album, the, the theremin part, um, I'm using a um, Spanish scale in the um the key of e and you because you can select the key too which is Mm -hmm. great so your root note when you get back to your root note whatever key your song is in um you can dial that in as well and then um, you can select what kind of scale you want and how scaled you want it to sound and so um so i will say though even though it sounds like i'm totally cheating which i kind of am (laughs) you still have to play the thing you know i mean you still have to get the right notes well you also had to write the melody exactly yeah yeah Yeah, so um and it was funny because our our mixing engineer um when he mixed the album for us i had done um i'd done a number of takes but i kept two of them and he instead of just using one he kept them both in in the in the mix and I was like, oh, hey, you know, you accidentally left one of these theremins in there, you know, and I go, they're not precise. He's like, what are you kidding me? He's like, that's in there on purpose. It's, on, it's like, who double tracks the theremin? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're right. Who does double track the theremin? Perhaps I'm, no one ever before. Exactly. And I'm like, and you know what? It does have a unique sound. So I was yeah. like, so we've got a double tracked theremin in there. And because it's not, it's a very imprecise instrument, mm-hmm. it, it, it created this really cool effect because I'm not playing it exactly the same both times you know so